everybody, and welcome to the Monday, Tuesday, oh, oh, wait a minute, Tuesday morning edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I said Monday, but then I had a, had a total lapse in judgment because Monday, oh yeah, my computer stopped working, so sorry we didn't have a uh, video for you yesterday. I went through the whole process of recording it, and then it didn't work on me. So uh, we are uh, we're, we're we're resetting our week. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, we look at the same ten to twelve futures markets every day, identifying high probability turning points, and looking for opportunities for both breakout and reversal trades. Uh, make sure that you click the subscribe button below uh, below so that you can get access as soon as we release them. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Not a whole lot to cover really today as we, you know, we had an upward day yesterday, but I was not a fan of the way that we broke out uh, from our our movement. I actually had posted something about that on Twitter. Uh, I had reposted somebody else's uh, comment. And the reason that I had posted that is because, you know, this was our breakout, right? We broke out above this area, but we broke out with um, not a lot of fervor, right? We didn't really have a huge push out of here, uh, you know, and, and I, I just wasn't a huge fan of this breakout. It didn't really set up the way that I would normally want a good breakout to look. Um, and so I didn't wind up taking this breakout uh, simply because I, I, I need more room to roam, and I didn't have enough room to roam with all of this noise over here to the left being things that could potentially slow it down. The other thing that scared me a little bit is my momentum uh, is is waning just a bit. Um, you know, when I look at my momentum, uh, it's kind of flattening out. We can see that we're, we're kind of flattened out on our momentum indicator here. I'm not a big indicator guy, uh, but our momentum is certainly... Uh, a, a flattening out, uh, and and I was getting a little nervous to uh, to jump in on this uh, on this breakout movement. So what I did was I kind of held off a little bit. I've got a potential reversal point above us uh, in this region here. Now that was found on a 15 minute chart. We know that because it's in purple. Um, purple uh, would be our 15 minute level, and it's this little area of sideways price action before a pretty nice little drop uh, right through here. Uh, which is 2704 by 2707. So it's a fairly small region. Now, I will say that on the breakout, um, you did get a chance on a retest. So sometimes if there's a, if the breakout isn't a, a, a super strong breakout, you'll get a retest opportunity to get in. So let me um, uh, remove all of these studies. Oops. Wrong button there. Studies, clear studies. All right, those were clouding up the, the the way a little bit. So our breakout was this area here. One opportunity to get in uh, that was a little bit safer. You know, when you don't have a great breakout, you did get a retest back to this area right in here on the 15 minute chart. And so this did give you a chance to get in <clears throat> without having a super strong breakout. This gave you a chance to get in and and carry this thing long since this point forward. So hopefully, you know, I didn't get a video out yesterday, but hopefully you were able to see that throughout the day as that was really the best entry. The best entry was on the retest back to this 15 minute area uh, off of the breakout. See, a, a good breakout with a lot of room to roam, which we'll take a look at one that, that could be in the Canadian dollar later today, uh, you're not going to get the retest area. But a breakout that has a lot of stuff overhead, you'll oftentimes get that retest area of the breakout. See, I've, I've missed a lot of really good trades waiting for the retest of the breakout, which never came. Um, I, I've also in my breakout trades, sometimes made the mistake of trying to force a breakout when it didn't have the right the right price action. Um, this one was was kind of that opportunity to trade the retest on the breakout. So hopefully some of you were able to catch that one yesterday. Looking here at the NQ, so our NASDAQ, we're coming into what could be a reversal area here. Fairly weak arrival into here as we're kind of chopping around before getting into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my properties to a dashed line. Now I'm using the dashed line simply because I want price to enter into here and look at a potential to get short as it comes back out because it's just not setting up for uh, a super strong uh, movement, you know, a, a touch and go kind of movement in there. 
So let's take a look now at our crude oil. So crude oil, uh, this is the line that I had drawn uh, last night as I attempted yet another recording uh, and it uh, failed on me. So hopefully I won't get through this whole recording and then, and then it uh, it fails on me again. Uh, if it does, I may just give up entirely. Just kidding. Uh, so here is a potential breakout for crude oil. Now I put it below this pivot area here, but this pivot area keeps getting tested and tested and tested. And and we got to remember that the more often a level gets tested, the the less inventory of orders is going to be remaining at this price level. So if we base uh, before this breakout, that would be ideal. So I would look for a, a base before that breakout area, and then that makes this 65.79 a little bit more palatable of a short opportunity for crude. Uh, in gold, there's not a whole lot to look at in gold. We're kind of in between some pretty big areas, so I'm going to leave gold with the lines that we have in play. We've got a breakout short below here. There's nothing up here that I like for a reversal. Um, I also don't like the fact that our uptrend has been broken, so that's that's a signal to just stay away. Give yourself some, some wide berth. Um, looking at our bond market, so in the bond arena, we have a potential reversal above current price. Uh, where we could get a decent short. This is a, a really nice setup. I like this as a as a little bit of fair price value below a pivot high. Um, so we could get some resistance through here. Now what we could get oftentimes though is a is a is a fairly strong rally up into here. So be on the lookout for a breakout up into here if you want to take it long and then the short opportunity does pre present itself right there. Uh, in the Aussie, so the Aussie has not been doing a whole lot. We had a breakout long on the Aussie a couple of days ago, which worked out really, really well for those of you that took it. This was a really nice opportunity. Um, you had another chance to get in right here on this pullback. So now what are we looking at? Well, our momentum to our upside is definitely waning. If I look at this on a bigger picture chart, like say our four hour, you'll see that we had this strong, almost parabolic move up. I mean, if you look at that angle, that's a really nice, strong move up. And now we're, we're kind of looking here, right? So that tells us that our momentum is weakening uh, and starting to slow down. Now, I'm not a big chart pattern guy, uh, just like I'm not a big indicator guy. But there are enough people that are that are going to look at this and say, you know, that's a, that's a rising head and shoulders, right? Shoulder, head, shoulder. You're going to have those in, in, a, in a head and shoulders pattern. You're going to have those shoulders just a little higher than the other. Um, and so if this is indeed a rising head and shoulders, then we can, then, then typically it's a measured move that's expected on the breakdown below that lower shoulder. So uh, if I take this and move it to here, this breakdown, and, and the only reason I'm showing you this is because what we expect is for price to come back to a fair price value area, which is, look at how that works, right there. So I think that this sets up, I, I don't, I'm, you know, price patterns have to be justified with, de, with, with areas of fair price value, with areas of supply and demand. Uh, that's really why a, what a price pattern means to me. So now I've got a potential breakdown short trade here because I've got a decent price target, which happens to match up with the measured move. That's the way I want to use a price pattern when it when it shows itself. Um, until then, I'm not a huge price pattern guy, but that's really the price pattern that it's showing me as we speak. Uh, looking at the euro, so the euro, we've got a short entry in play right here. Price almost got into there, not quite yet. Uh, there's still There still is some room for this. Notice this has a dashed line. We need price to come in and then get out uh, as it comes down. Canadian dollar. Now, this is the one I was talking about earlier. The Canadian dollar, look at it. We hit... Base, hit, base, hit, not breaking yet. When I move this out to the four-hour chart, I don't have really anything until this area up here. Well, when I move that back to the one-hour, now you're going to see that I have some room to roam from here to here on the breakout with a stop below here. Remember, your stop has to go below the last pivot if you take the breakout. So I think that this that this uh, Canadian dollar is giving us a pretty good setup uh, for a breakout long to the upside. Uh, looking last but certainly not least at our Great British Pound Japanese Yen. 
copper and nat gas. Um, nat gas, I really haven't gotten too much out of lately. There's just not a whole lot it's, uh, that, it's, that it's given me. Um, you know, there's, if I look at this on a four hour, you can see that we are in a chop, 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 chop situation. Um, when I go down to the one hour, I, I feel like I'm forcing a trade when the market's doing this. I really feel like I've got to force it for it to to come in, uh, and I don't like forcing trades. They they don't they they never seem to work out in my favor. It's you know it's kind of like in the it, when I was in high school, I was on the basketball team. Uh, I was not a good basketball player, but every time I got in the game, I wanted to score. I wanted to get my turn, so I would force the shot. And anybody who's ever played basketball knows that if you force the shot, the odds of it going in are not good. Um, you know, because I wanted to score. I wanted to show that I knew what I was doing. Well, in trading, I feel like I'm forcing the shot. Um, if I feel like I'm forcing the shot, I'm not going to take the shot. And that's kind of my feeling in that gas. Now, this area up here is an opportunity, but we need to get there first. Uh, in the Great British Pound, I've got a potential reversal trade down in here. Uh, if we can make it down to that region, uh, nothing really above us that I'm going to take at the moment. Looking at this on a daily chart, just something I would like to point out is that for for all the musings of oh no the 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 the, the pound is going to fall apart on the Brexit, we're almost back to our Brexit short um, to the Brexit opportunity. Uh, you know, from a couple of years ago. So just keep that area in mind as we start to head up into there. We're actually, you know, we've, we've spent the last, mm, we spent basically all of 2017 in the one-day price movement that was Brexit. Um, and so where's it going from here? Well, we could get a breakout up. This is setting up for a, a decent breakout long um, with a little bit of, uh, of room to roam in that area. Japanese yen, we've got a potential reversal point still up above us here. Uh, the yen is in an upward sloping trend line. We're at that trend line now. So I wouldn't be object to somebody using a candle to candle style of trading if they get a decent reversal down here um, uh, in order to get long up there on the yen. And then for copper, uh, we have a pretty strong sell off in the overnights on the hourly chart. When I go to the four hour, we still got this area up here. But inside that four hour, not a ton of movement for me to, uh, to take advantage of, uh, you know, up and down. I've got this area right through here, but I'm not a huge fan of the way this setup has occurred on the breakdown from this level. Um, but we have broken our upward trend line. So I'm just going to leave this one be for now and not really add anything more to it. So I uh, hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday. Uh, if, uh, if you, if you uh, get a chance today, keep, keep an eye on the Twitter feed. Uh, as any updates we have for the day, we will be posting to Twitter. So thank you so much for joining us. And I will talk to you soon. See you guys.